Just playing, guys. Nobody was harmed in the making of this video. As you can see, we got her stripped down. We got all the pieces off of her. Let me grab them taillights out of our way. We don't need to work around those guys. Let's see, I got that other panel in. I'm going to hit us with some caulk around them edges, some sealant. And then I am going to take some spars, clear urethane, and paint the corners and any of the edging you see along this, including around the windows and the doors, all along the edging, corners, any place that there's an edge of plywood that we want to protect, especially like there and around the fenders, you know, where it meets the trailer, doors, any place protruding that might, heaven forbid, ever let water in there. All right, let me get that knocked out of the way, and I'm going to get some of that red aluminum skin in here and get going on her. That's 50% spars urethane sealant and 50% a thinner of your choice. Just the second coat is full strength. It's not thinned at all. I did allow about an hour between coats for that first coat to soak into the wood really good it became tacky so i went ahead and rolled on brushed on a second coat of the spars urethane not thinned i used low gloss you can use whatever you want if you, even if you have oil-based paint laying around or something and you want to thin it down and you wait you know use that so you don't waste material you have a half open can use it in a couple hours that's had time to dry we are going to get started on the skin now. I float my aluminum skin and my Phylon. I always have. I do not glue it anywhere. Um, it's, the way it's always been done. Professional campers are done that way, the big ones. Remember the old Shastas? You could just peel the skin right off once you remove that trim. A few nails here and there was all that held it on. I do it because of the expansion rate of the two different materials, aluminum and Phylon are going to expand at a quicker rate than the wood underneath it or the substructure underneath it. You'll get beer canning. You may. Some people are going to chime in and say, oh, it don't happen to me. Oh, mine's been fine for 10 years. That's great. Awesome. Glad you built a well-built camper. I've never had beer canning on any of mine, and I've floated mine now for several years. We do, I do a couple trips Tip, yeah. well, tips I want to show you coming up here when we do put the aluminum on here is whenever I have screws protruding through the aluminum into the wood underneath it, I use a bit slightly larger than the screw we'll be using. Man, I can't talk today. Sorry, guys. Um, that just lets the aluminum slide back and forth a little bit under pressure if it needs to. I found out if you don't drill, pre-drill your holes through your aluminum skin and you run a self-tapper, that self-tapper will do, like I talked about on the roof, it will actually bunch that aluminum together and create a high spot. Every time you have a screw, you'll see it. We are going to get started on the sides first. They're the easiest part. Now, I am going to cheat and just use a saber saw with a fine metal blade. A lot of guys use a router, and that's perfect. I mean, a router will give you a nice, clean finish. It's loud. Metal, metal shavings will be flying anywhere. So do wear safety equipment, eye protection, long sleeves, gloves, whatever you need to, a mask to prevent yourself from getting that hot metal shavings on you. Even with my saw, I get a little bit, but not bad. I made my marks on the backside. I crawled inside the camper, made my marker on the door and the window. Pretty simple. Just like in kindergarten, when you follow the lines, you get an A. Let me get this down and on a bench and I'll start cutting her out. All right, guys, there's the back side of that aluminum panel I, I marked out. We're going to go ahead and get my saber saw and my metal blade and go ahead and cut these lines out. I like to leave myself about an eighth of an inch. I go on the outside of my mark along the 
the window and the door and I go on the inside of my mark on the framing, that just gives me a little expansion room on my skin. Um, if you use a router, you could, you know, router it straight up against the edge of your wood and get an offset bit that would cut an eighth inch gap in there for you if you decide to do it that way. Ooh-wee, if skin and trim and access panels don't get you excited, you're on the wrong channel, babies. All right, gang, back in the doghouse. It's a whopping 42 degrees today in here. I do have the fire going, so it'll kick it up nice. Won't take too long. As you can see, I popped the door and window in temporarily. I'm going to go ahead and mark out my spots that are pre-drilled on these doors. I'm going to go ahead and drill holes in my window every eight inches. Some people just put the bottle tape on it, pull it in, and use the inside trim. I like to screw it around the outside just like the doors and any other of my baggage doors. Um, just my way of doing it. Do it however you want. I will drill these with the 3 16 drill bit, which is slightly bigger than my screw, like I explained before. That will allow the aluminum to slide under pressure if it needs to as it heats and contracts and not bunch up right there. It also, pre-drilling, a slightly larger hole. If you're using self-tappers and you run them in, they tend to grab the aluminum under this and bunch it up, creating a wave at every screw. You don't want that. If you don't want to see that, just pre-drill your holes ahead of time. A slightly larger, like I said, than the screw, and it will not allow the aluminum to grab when that screw goes in. I don't use soft tappers, I just use stainless steel number sixes, I believe. Phillips head uh, screws. I used to use clutch head, but I can't find them anymore. So if anybody knows where you can get them in bulk with the square bit clutch head number six stainless screw, let me know in the comments. Um, we're going to get started. I'm going to pull these windows back out. I do start at the top after I put my windows in and I start this trimming. I like to trim from the top down just to let the aluminum relax and lay flat. On these square drops, on my round tier drops, it's easier to do because you're working with a big piece of trim. On these, I only have 92 inch pieces of trim. So I'm going to start down here and trim up, cut a B notch here, cut a B notch here in my trim and lay it as I go. It'll stop somewhere in here, so we'll have a seam. I'll just sick a glue it together or something, like I do on my other ones, and butt it up tight. Keep in mind, wherever the trim stops, there's no break in the aluminum under it, so the water really doesn't have anywhere to go uh, if it was to ever get in there. I do also put a little bit of sealant on each glue or on each screw as I put it in to glue them in place. Uh, this trim will stop somewhere in here, and then that trim will carry down. Two pieces usually does each side. Um, plus a piece along the bottom there. <laughs> hey gang, you can see I pre-drilled my holes already and through the frame of the window and into the aluminum skin. This is called a drill bit stop. 
It is adjustable with a little Allen screw. Comes in different sizes for fit different drill bits. Uh, it is adjustable. You can move it up to the end of the drill bit if you just want to score your metal. Or you can move it down as much as you need to to drill through any thickness of metal. Uh, it just stops the drill bit from drilling all the way through. They're pretty neat to have. A couple bucks. They come in different sizes like I said. And uh, just another helpful tool. Alright, I'm going to get some butyl tape on there. A quick tip. I'll probably mention it a hundred times again in this video. If you're doing this in the summertime or when it's warm out, put your butyl tape in a freezer for two, three minutes, get it chilled. It won't stick to your fingers. Woohoo, it's cozy in here now. Let's get onto that butyl tape. Now we know this is the top. I'm gonna start my butyl tape down here in the center and work it around on this. If you have a square window, you wanna run your top piece all the way across to the edge then run your two bottom pieces butted up to that top piece that just prevents a little bit yes it squishes together and everything else and as you're running these down run them all the way past it and then run your bottom piece in between that just prevent kind of makes an umbrella seal all the way down your window we don't have to worry about that on this because we have rounded corners everybody's favorite butyl tape guys this stuff right here is ice cold, as I showed you a minute ago, it's 42 in here. If this stuff gets warm, it tends to stick to your fingers. And it doesn't bend very well, regardless. So what I do is kind of push it down there, peel it back, round the corners without any paper on it. It tends to help, it tends to bend a little easier that way. Like I said, this stuff's cold, so it's not fighting me at all. It's working really well. You don't want to stretch this and thin it out in spots. You just lay it down, let it relax. It does shrink up in the sun and UV light. Uh, about a five year lifespan, they say. <clears throat> I've never had a window or a joint leak on my campers using butyl tape. Now keep in mind we will put some sealant on each screw head as we put them in just to add another layer of sealant. Some guys do, some guys don't. Do what you want. The biggest thing here is don't stretch it. That'll create a gap. It'll shrink up and you'll have a gap at the bottom. Or one of the corners. This stuff isn't really sticky when it's cold at all. Uh, when it's warmer. It does stick to your fingers, like I said. But when it's cold, it's really easy to work with. I'm going to leave a slight overhang at the bottom here. Camera picks that up. I'm about a half inch or so over. Bunch it backwards on itself right there just to add a little extra it will probably smash that out as we tighten the screws and then if it does wait a day or two out in the Sun before you do any trimming of this put it out in the heat put out the Sun let it find where it's gonna go because this stuff will shrink in the Sun and move a little bit and it will seep out on the edges of your window. This is an eighth inch thick by three quarter wide butyl tape. I get it off of eBay Furniture Lady 10. She supplied it to me for years. It's not expensive. 100 feet is like 25 bucks. 
you'll use a hundred foot on a scamper easy around your doors around all your trim and around your windows uh, don't forget you have a roof vent if you're putting one in it all needs sealing up guys um, like I was saying if this does seep out in the Sun over time take a plastic old credit card or one you don't want to <laughs> spend any more money on and just run it along the edge of your window and then just peel this stuff off it comes right off it's easy to clean up off the side of your camper when it's new we're looking good we're gonna get this window back in for the last time I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, guys. I wiped off most of that sealant that squished out around them screw heads just so that that insert molding that goes around there and locks into that lip won't, won't have any interference with that silicone. Probably hit that one a little more with a rag and get it out of there, but you can see it squished out pretty decent. Same with the window. Now, I will paint these stainless screws black once I do the final cleanup on these since the door trim will be covering the other screws we don't need the window screws to be seen but yeah there she is window and door installed all right i'll probably now go back and do some aluminum work we'll get the front and rear panels made and then we'll get to the trimming of the sides and the corner molding remember the top's already done in that light gray to reflect sun so we're good there but I want to start in the front with that piece of trim and come up and around and then finish off in the back so we don't have too many breaks along the front of the camper. So next up, we'll be bending that front piece of aluminum on our brake. Guys, I want to show you something. Look at how well and easy this door closes. They call them slam latches you're supposed to have to slam it but that's pretty nice fit now if yours doesn't close that easily don't get your panties in a bunch come in here I've had to do this on a couple builds drill a eighth inch hole right here and one right there run a one inch or inch and a half screw in there and slowly draw it up between the hinges whatever direction you need. If your door's sagging a little bit, draw in the top hinge. If it's a little high and hitting at this top edge, draw in the bottom hinge. We did good on this one. She fits in tight. I just wanted to show you that tip. I've had to use it before. And even on older campers, after the doors settle into place and they get heavy, they sag. That helps to draw it up back up where it needs to be, kind of like an adjustment that's not there. So, how many of you guys caught my mistake?
been building campers for 20 plus years and I still make mistakes. Guys, I'm not like a lot of the guys on YouTube. If I screw up, I'm going to keep it in my video and show you. It just shows you I'm not perfect. And it just helps us learn. I'm sure you caught on by now that I made a mark where that goes. But I never drilled it out, did I? Luckily, the butyl tape was cold and didn't sit up. So I was able to just loosen them screws on both of those guys. Pull that out a little bit with a wedge and drill my one inch hole through it with a hole saw didn't affect the wiring or anything i always put my lights the center hole as six inches down and i try and keep the tops of all my through walls pretty much level just to please the eye and as you can see up here i did make a mark prior to that so i knew where the hole, hole was but yeah now you know guys not everybody's perfect and we're gonna show our bloopers Dang, I transferred my two marks to this front piece of metal. I've had that break since I, well, for about the last 20, 25 years I built it that long ago. Um, I've used it on a lot of projects. Hot rods, campers, you name it. Uh, I've bent 16 gauge with it. It is homemade, as you can see. Um, somebody threw some metal out. I picked it up and grabbed it, and that's the finished product. I do have to get a, make a little bit longer threaded rod for the tension on it. The cables have stretched. I could shorten the cables and bring that nut down and then redo it, but it seems to stretch every couple years. So it seems to like that angle to keep tension down on the center for my bend. Um, we're going to bend the deepest bend first, and then we'll bend that end bend. Angle finder says that's about a 43 degree bend on the bottom and a 47 degree bend on the top. So one's a little less than 45, one's a little more than 45. We'll go ahead and throw them in here and bend them up with my eye, my eagle eye, as some guys say, and go to town, guys. I need that flashlight anyway. Guys, I know not everybody has access to a brake. 
I didn't until I built one. My first few campers I built, I actually laid some 2x12s down on a 5 foot long bench and used this front edge of the bench and a 2x12 on top, clamped it, took another 2x4, a 2x12, laid it up here, made some rude brackets and actually bent the metal with the 2x12s. When I get time, I'll actually show you guys how to do it on the floor with a couple 2x12s if you want. Let me know in the comments if you want me to. I know Brian said he did because he doesn't have access to a break. Um, we'll figure out a way to do it without one. If you can't find somebody with a speed shop or a metal shop that's willing to help you out for 20 bucks, you know, to bend anything you need bent. Um, I know it would be a hassle to run there and back, but it could be done. Um, we, uh, we'll figure something out. Give me a few on that one. This aluminum has some spring back to it. It's not a lot, but it is more than steel. I don't know exactly how that works. And I do have a rude gauge set up over here. You can't see it on the camera. I'll show you in a minute. Um, to set it at this bend was the 43 or 44 degree. So to that and if you're ever worried about bending it too far just bend it slightly more than less than you need fit it and if it's not enough go back and bend it a little more don't bend it too far the first time it's easier to bend more and it's hard to take a bend out of, of aluminum I like to do it a couple times let it sit for a minute See if it's going to spring down any. Bend it again. Right there is our first bend. And that is right at 43. So let's try it. Guys, this is where that protective coating comes in real handy. I clean this thing every time I use it in between those two surfaces, and you can hear it, it still drags on it a little bit. It hasn't really scratched through the plastic at all. There you see our bend, dead on the money at 43, so I'm not going to do it again, that's fine. I'm going to finish this bend. Remember, this will have an overlap right here where this gray comes over to the edge. And then we'll put a piece of trim across there. We also have another piece to cut for the bottom down here. And remember, there will be diamond plate from about here down to protect that seam so no water can get in there. Let me do my next bend. And I'll get her up there for you all to see. That's when you bend it pulls the metal on itself when you put it in this bend and it makes itself slightly longer. That measurement to this measurement is 17 and 3 quarters on this one. Double and triple check your measurement because that's the only crucial part on this whole build is that aluminum skin going on there. You don't want it too short of course. It won't fit the radius or the two bends of your camper and too long We'll create a high dip right there or a dip on the front so you want to keep it as tight to the actual measurements on the camper I draw along the seam and then straight in on the side walls and I measure two or three times down that just to make sure uh, it's one of them cases where you measure a hundred times and 
bend once. <laughs> so hopefully we got it right. We're going to bend this one, set it up there, and let's see. Again, I'm not going to do the full hard bend on this one. I'm going to do a partial bend, lay it up there, check it, and then do a bend again. If needed. Support your aluminum as you lift it, as you bend it, so it doesn't kink it. It will do a negative kink right here on this kind of break because of this sharp edge. If you have a, a break where this wall here is longer, of course it will not do that. Had I known when I built this, I'd be doing aluminum. I probably would have made it a little different, but it works. It is what it is. how she's going to sit on the camper right there. So actually from there to here was a solid 90. We just weren't quite at 45s on these. This is the part where you want to support your piece, your work piece. So you don't get that negative bend here on the edge. Right here. Again, if you're using 2x12s and a sharp piece of angle iron or something, you may have a little more support there. I thought I was a little shy of what I bent on that last bend here. I didn't go to quite 43 like I was going to, or 47 I mean. And look, she's dead on the money. I hope the camera picks that up. We got really nice and tight on our two bends, and that trim will pull this down right to this once it's in place. We overlap nice on that piece up here. And that top piece goes up to here, and we're going to use our another piece down here, and then we'll cover them both with diamond plate on the front so that there's no actual lap. But, yeah, that's pretty nice. It come up really nice. I'm happy with it. There you go, hold her in place. I hope the camera picks that up, guys. We'll get that back piece made, then we're gonna get some trim on this baby. That bend was 39 degrees. I bent this at 37. I'd rather have some spring down than a lip backwards on this thing or a high spot in our bend. I can tell what you're thinking. You're thinking, how the hell are you going to get that hole cut in there? We'll get it. Don't cheat. We are three and three quarters down from the top lip here. We gonna cut us a hole. Same with those two down there after we get this one cut. We'll cut a hole out of that. Make it kind of an access point to get in there and draw our outline from the back side. Once I get that one done, and I can clamp it on there. I'll do the same with them two, marking a hole down from that bend to the top lip of each one of them. Cut a hole, draw it out. Aha, now you see what I did. Of course, it's not pushed up tight here. You know, I'm sure that it is, but you see my angle fits nice and tight right there. We're good on our first bend, and I have an access hole where I can Stick my hand in, draw the outline of that without having to attach it. Now, if you have a router, it would come in handy right now. You could router up from here and follow your wood around with a guide bit and it would cut an access hole. But there you go, that's what we're going for quick and easy. 
I'll go ahead and get them other two knocked out. You don't have to see me do that. You've seen me cut holes in aluminum all this half of this build. So I'm going to go ahead and knock it out. I'll come back to you when I get this panel up. Woohoo! Today, let's do some trim. Some trim. And you guessed it. Some more trim. You don't like watching me get my trim on? You may want to fast forward now. Just kidding. Watch it all. I need your help. All right, gang. Here's one of them angle finders I was telling you about. This one's digitable. Digitable. Yeah, digitable. Digital. <laughs> and adjustable. Don't try and put them two words together. You come up with digitable. It's not a word. I tried. Anyway, that's how I got my angles on my two bends and on my bend in the rear before I took it over to the brake. Uh, uh, 12 bucks, Amazon. Harbor Freight carries them too. Not a bad little tool. Get started on this trim. Quick warning. If you have lights above you, watch out when you pull this trim up. I run my trim right down to the metal trailer frame down there. You want this piece that's vertical going down. You don't want your horizontal piece interrupting it. So this piece will hang lower than the piece running across the front. A reason that being if water does get into this channel, it's not obstructed at the bottom of your camper, it can go out. You can seal it with some sealer if you want. Uh, just leave a little weep hole and the wire will find its way out. So we're gonna put her there. This is the part y'all are afraid of, cutting your trim. What I do is go straight up on an angle. I kind of pick the difference between these two. My imaginary line goes up. That's where the corner of that trim is going to intersect when it's all the way up there. And I scribe a straight line the best I can. See? Like. We are going to do is notch this leg out in a V pattern. It will allow this to bend and make that sharp corner right there. We'll do it again here after we get this one done and sized up. The reason being is if you take equal amounts off of both sides here, when you fold it, one of these legs will not be longer than the other. I'm sure if you've worked with wood before, you've seen your angle cuts and how they affect each other. Oh yeah, baby. You're good there. I actually probably took a little too much off there. Maybe. Let's tighten it up. It'll be alright. That's what we're going for right there. And I'll do it again here. And then when it ends, we'll butt the two pieces together. You can start to see how cool that looks. I will take some black paint and just touch that up. And after I see, that's what our finished piece looks like. You can see it's a pretty tight trim. A little black paint on there. Put some sealing under there. Some silicone, some kind on top of your butyl tape and you'll be fine. That'll never let water in and it will look good when it's done. Same thing up here guys. Find your center. Scribe a mark. Some scientific measurement practice that you could do to figure this out but I'm kind of a kamikaze guy I just do it <laughs> you do 
whatever you're comfortable with. On my teardrops, the rounded top ones, of course we're not making these V-notches. This stuff will bend a pretty sharp radius. And I'm going to do a simulation. I'll cut a wall and, and go ahead and put a piece of trim on it to show you guys how easy that bends. But this, on the square drop models, I pre-bend. On my teardrop models, I don't even bother to pre-bend. I put the butyl tape down on the camper, start at the bottom front, and just start screwing my way around with sealer. Um, push down as I go to follow the curve it's easier this one you can't really do that on a square drop it's easy you kind of got to cut and bend as you go and there you have it you see how tight and clean that looks beautiful we will get some butyl tape on it running your hand along there for any slivers that will get you. Now, I did put a couple brad nails in here to temporarily hold it. As I put the trim on, I am going to go back and pull them out. I don't want anything holding my skin in place that tight. I want it to be able to float. So I will pull them out. I'm going to run a bead of sealer along this. Right, you can see that white sealer. It's actually clear and it will dry clear. Uh, it's just uh, window trim seal is all it is all weather it'll be hidden under the butyl tape i just wanted to put a little added protection on there and for those of you that remember I told you i couldn't run a bead of, of caulk to save my life <laughs> um yeah good thing it's hidden Your butyl tape guys I do leave it a little long at the front and I put this edge flush with my camper it does not need to protrude you want your leg of your trim right up tight against that you can always go back with some sicka bond or sicka flex something clear and run a bead along that between the red and the black trim if you want I don't do it um, it's totally up to you if you do this stuff squishes down. This is eighth inch by one inch on the roof is what I use. I use the eighth inch by three quarter around the doors and windows just because it tends to seep out quite a bit. This doesn't as much. The trim kind of has grooves in it to hold it in place. You may get a little walking on it, but not much. Um, I'm going to put that piece of aluminum trim on now. Two types of screws you could use here. Stainless. These are called Tex. T-E-K-S. They have a flat low profile head which fits between the two lips of the trim or a coated deck screw coarse thread not drywall deck uh, both of these are the same length inch and a quarter really I've had I've used them both and never had a problem with either one some people say this one will rot out and rust out I've never seen it I mean I took a camper part that was nine years old of mine that had gotten hit was in a storm in Florida even and got washed out into the water and then a boat hit it so I had to replace the corner above the side above the door and I took all of these screws out after all that time and there was no rust on none at all now I do have butyl tape under it and sealing on top of it but either one of these will work guys um, I'm gonna use deck screws on this just because I have them these stainless ones run about eight or nine bucks for a hundred of them I believe and you know deck screws are about the same price so you're really not neither way you're saving money do what you want if you like the stainless factor use it if you don't use the deck screws if you don't really care like I say these things are sealed in pretty well with when we're done you'll see that I do pre drill my holes they do make these in self tappers but you know my theory on the self tappers and then grabbing the aluminum I don't like to use them um, yeah, this is totally your preference. Do some research if you're not comfortable with what I say. Start at your bottom edge. Make sure she's flush. Goes in real easy, guys. 
as you're just screwing into some wood at this point. If you worry about slipping off like that, and you don't like, don't care about your fingers too much, wrap your finger around it. If you do, you could take a block of wood or something and lay it here, or even a piece of round rubber stock if you have some, and put it around your drill bit. You could get one of them fancy screw holder bits too, which I don't have, but hey, get you one. She's drawing up there, it looks really good. You can see we are right up against that red aluminum skin. And very minimal gap right there, which we will fill with some clear silicone. And that's kind of what she's gonna look like all the way around, guys. You cut this one off flush with the roof of the camper. Laid my trim up there and marked my holes all the way around the rest of the side so I don't have to stop. Laid my butyl tape in one continuous piece. I never broke it over there and I don't break it at the corner here. I leave it one piece all the way down. Don't stretch it as you go. Just kind of pat it in place and leave yourself about two inches at the bottom. It will shrink up as I said before. All right, we're gonna leave this on there. Get the back piece of trim on. If our holes line up still, it should. really good. I think you're getting the idea. So I measure this one out of 45. what we're going for there. We're flush on this end now. Our cut lines up really nice there and we're tight up against that rail there. I am going to, remember I got that paper on here so this doesn't stick. I'm going to run a bead of 
sealer across there and where they butt up right there and here just just as an added protection on top of the butyl tape that's already there. All right, boys and girls, while we are sealing and trimming, let's go ahead and get our tail light in there. Got three through walls. These are not screwed all the way through the wood. This is three quarter backer. I screwed in maybe a half an inch screws will not protrude through the wall but this plug will as our wiring and it is hidden along the channel back here i am going to take some butyl tape since that's a through hole we'll wrap our little light in it here keep in mind some of this will probably ooze out guys lettering up oh yeah look at that Let's squish it in place there's our two holes Sure, she don't move too much. Like that. Sorry, I know my head was in the way. It is what it is. Looks good. I did leave my holes. On this wire just a little big so I can squish her over which way I need to. You can see how she moves. It's pretty pretty good. Pretty good. I do say so myself. We look at that. I think y'all are getting the idea of the skin and trim video, so I'm probably going to end it here. Just wanted to show you a little finish of some of the accessories through walled and install. We got that bottom piece on there. Got my template for my fenders. I don't remember if I don't know if you remember, but in the previous video when I built the walls, we had put those capture nuts in through the wood on the back side and. I had made a template to their locations and marked it with a couple divots on the frame so I know exactly where they're at. We'll drill through the aluminum with probably a 5 16 drill bit or so. That'll give us a little wiggle room there too. Oh yeah, and I got the box in. It's just sat on there as a mock-up right now. We're going to build two pieces of angle iron going out to the camper frame itself from the tongue on a 45 degree angle on both sides to help support that and to add a little more support to that quarter wall tongue. I am waiting on my black diamond plate. I ordered, oh gosh, about a month ago and I guess they had a trucking shipping accident and it was in a mess so they're reordering it again for me and it'll be here this week one day. So I was gonna wrap this build up and do a time lapse on the finish, putting the fenders on and finish the wiring up in just time lapse but i think i'll wait and do one more video of the diamond plate and the fenders installed and the electric and then we'll call it even on this one call her done and she will be about ready to be up for sale and headed on down the road hopefully for somebody to start camping in 
Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all of you. Um, hope you learned a little bit on this trim. It's nothing to be afraid of. Just take your time. Make several small cuts. Don't make one big cut. And you'll do fine, guys. Stay tuned for, like I said, the fenders, the diamond plate, and some finished electric, and the rollout. Thanks for watching.